So I want to talk about ping pong for a second. If I had a ping pong ball and I had a ping pong table, now obviously a ping pong table is different from the ground when I'm hitting a golf ball, but if I took that ping pong ball and I placed it on the table and I took my ping pong racket and I just chopped down, almost pinching the ball between the table and my racket here, that we know the ball is going to go out there to the other side of the net and it's going to hit and just spin right back. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to backspin a golf ball with a wedge. I'm going to go over the scientific reason as to why a golf ball spins, as well as some observations I've made over the years teaching and playing the game. But before we get to that, I've really enjoyed bringing this free content to you and our YouTube community, it's growing and that's exciting. And I want it to continue to grow and you can help me with that. And the way you can do that is by smashing that like button, subscribing to my YouTube channel which just alerts you when I have new videos available for you to watch, and then commenting. And this helps in more ways than you know. So I have yet to teach a short game school where somebody doesn't raise their hand and say, how do I put backspin on the golf ball with a wedge around the green? And historically, and I've seen this with other instructors, the answer has been, well, are, is your wedge clean? Is the face of your wedge clean? Are you using a new wedge or is it an older wedge that the grooves are worn down? Hey, are you using a spin golf ball? And those factors are important as far as spinning the ball, but I don't think it's the overall factor of why a ball spins, and I have a reason for that. There's a doctor that I teach pretty much every other weekend throughout the year, and when we come back here to the short game area, he takes a lesson at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we come back here about 8.30, and the dew is heavy, it's wet, his wedge is wet, the golf ball's wet, he's using old wedges, He's using a golf ball that doesn't spin a lot, these range balls, and he'll stand here and he'll hit these shots and the ball will hit the green and stop and it blows my mind all the time. So I stand here and I scratch my head and I say, okay, well, he's not doing those things that we think need to happen for him to spin the golf ball, but he's still spinning the golf ball. And it takes me back to a few years ago, I was at a teaching symposium and there was a scientist from one of the major manufacturers doing a presentation on spin on a golf ball and about 45 minutes into the presentation he kind of looked up and said so we're not exactly sure what imparts spin on a golf ball but for sure we know that friction is a major factor and so I started thinking well if the world's top scientists can't figure it out what chance do we as golf professionals have but again there are some scientific reasons as to how we can impart spin or how we can increase friction between the club face and the golf ball and I'm going to go over those things and I just have my experience of playing the game teaching the game and things that I see with people who spin the ball a lot and and those that don't and it kind of leads me into my next topic and what that is is I noticed that some players are just high spin players they just create spin you know, and it has to do with their pattern and the way they apply the club to the golf ball. A good example of this would be like Luke Donald, Tony Finau. And then the other thing I see is players that have a harder time imparting spin on the golf ball. And again, it has to do with the pattern and the way that they swing the, the club and they apply the club face to the golf ball. But a tour player that doesn't spin the ball a whole lot, uses trajectory more to stop the golf ball, would be Jason Day. So just some examples, and so I think the first question we have to ask, are we spin players or are we not spin players? And then from there, kind of move into, all right, what can I do to maybe become a little bit more of a spin player around the green or, or impart some backspin on the golf ball? Or if it's already there, um, you know, just learning to use it to our advantage and, and using it the best that we can. Okay, so let's start with the scientific answer as to how do we impart spin on a golf ball or how do we increase the friction between the club face and the golf ball. And there's something that TrackMan came up with and it's called spin loft. And what that is, it's the relationship of how much loft I'm showing at impact. Am I showing a lot of loft? Am I showing a little loft? And how much down I'm hitting. And if that spin loft window is too wide, 
I'm not going to create spin. And believe it or not, if we get that spin loft window too narrow, I'm not going to create spin either. So I want to live somewhere in that middle range. So what's practical application? Like what can I do to increase friction, to increase this spin loft? And one thing I notice with players is when they want to take loft off the golf club, they tend to hit down or they tend to point the loft into the ground. So a good way to do it better or a better way to do it or to improve it is can I make a really shallow divot but as I'm making this nice little shallow divot or just kind of clipping it off the grass can I not show as much loft? Can I take some of the loft away? And this really comes down to using our wrists correctly in the golf swing. So if I can de-loft the club just a little bit by using my wrists the right way without hitting down too much, I can get that spin loft window in an acceptable range that when the ball hits the green, it can go ahead and hopefully check up for me. So that's the first way I'm gonna do it. Just gonna set up and, and my focus here is taking very little grass but at the same time, just feeling like I decreased the loft of the club a little bit. I've got a 56 degree wedge here. By just having that handle, just a hair forward at impact and a nice little scratch of the grass. So you can see that drove in there pretty low and when it hit, it grabbed just a little bit. So the next way that I wanna talk about, and I worked for a guy early in my career who spun the ball around the green an amazing amount. And again, this isn't scientific. This is based more on observation. But around the green, he really would hit down or chop down on a golf ball. So I want to talk about ping pong for a second. If I had a ping pong ball and I had a ping pong table, now obviously a ping pong table is different from the ground when I'm hitting a golf ball. But if I took that ping pong ball and I placed it on the table and I took my ping pong racket and I just chopped down, almost pinching the ball between the table and my racket here, that we know the ball is going to go out there to the other side of the net and it's going to hit and just spin right back. So this would be the second way. If you, you know, try and take some loft away, try and clip it nice and, and neat right off the top of the grass but it doesn't quite work for you the ball's not biting another way you can try is just hey can i increase this angle of descent and almost chopping down on the back of the golf ball to impart a little bit of spin and uh, the guy that i mentioned earlier i mean he played in u.s opens uh, british opens british senior opens u.s senior open so really a fantastic player but saw a lot of uh, wrist set and a lot of downward strike in his action around the green. But man, when that ball would hit the green, it would just hit and just almost like the ping pong ball on the ping pong table when I, <coughs> I chopped down on it. And it hits the other side and, and just kind of tugs back a little bit. So let's give that one a try real quick. So I'm just gonna get you know a little bit more trail wrist. That would be my left wrist for a left-handed player, but just a little more trail wrist action to see if I can't just drive down onto the back of that golf ball. And for a right-handed player, it's gonna be more your right wrist, that's your trail wrist. I'm just gonna kind of pick it up and, and just kind of drop it on the back of the golf ball. See, it came out a little higher, but again, when it hit the green, it had just a little bit of check. And with these golf balls and uh, my nice clean club, and it's an older club, so the grooves are worn a little bit, but it did tug, it did try and, and back up just a little bit. And going back to my story of players are spin players or they aren't, as a kid, I created a tremendous amount of spin around the green. Every shot that I hit came out real low and it would check up a couple times and stop right next to the hole. And as I continued to practice, I changed my technique. I got better at hitting the high soft one around the green, which we need. You know, to me, that's one of the hardest shots in the short game. But as I improved that shot, I lost that low spinner shot. And so it's really hard for me to spin the ball around the green anymore. So what I would say is my action at, when I was younger was more of a spin action where now I use trajectory 
and putting the ball up into the air to stop the golf ball versus trying to impart any spin around the green with a wedge. And there's more than one way to get it done. As uh, I think it was Sam Snead said, why would I ever want the ball to back away from the hole, which is a, a good question. All right. So the last way that I want to talk about, a third way or that I know or that I see people, and it's a friend of mine has Luke Donald, who spins the ball a tremendous amount around the green. He has him on his uh, 3D, his AMM system. And what they see with him is that Luke Donald actually creates more uh, pronation and supination, or supination and pronation of his forearms than any other player that he has on 3D. So that's just very simply kind of opening and closing. They see a lot more of that with Luke than they do with any other player. Now again, I don't think this is something that you can necessarily go out to the range and say, all right, tomorrow I'm just going to really feel like I open and close that thing around the green from you know, 20 or 30 yards and all of a sudden the ball is going to hit and stop. But I'm just giving you different things to kind of look at. If you're somebody who spins the ball, maybe you understand why you spin the ball now. Or if you're somebody who wants to maybe spin it a little bit more, a little bit of this sort of feeling added to what your pattern already is can generate some speed or get you to stop it quicker. And then we'll go back to my doctor friend in just a second and I'll kind of let you know how he does it. So with the next one, I'm just going to feel a lot of opening and closing, more so than I usually would around the green. Yeah, and you can see that ball hit and stopped almost immediately. So definitely important, just a little bit more spin for me uh, when I do that. So let's go back to my doctor friend that I teach. And I see a ton of spin. The ball's wet, his club's wet, he's got old wedges. Uh, you know, the grooves aren't as, as clean and as sharp as what we would see on a new wedge. And what I see is I see a little bit of all this. So when I watch him, he's got a lot of trail wrist. So for me, that's going to be my left wrist. So he's got a lot of trail wrist action and at the same time creates a tremendous amount of rotation through impact. So he kind of blends the second two together where he sort of chops down on it and releases it at the same time. And his ball, when it hits the green, as I said, will stop immediately. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. You now have a few ways that you can backspin a golf ball with a wedge. Remember the first way is the scientific way, is decreasing some loft while not hitting down too much, controlling that spin loft window. We don't want it too wide, we don't want it too narrow, but just applying the right amount, which is really just experimentation and trial and error. The second way was just an observation. Think about the ping pong paddle and the, the ping pong ball. And I'm just hitting down abruptly into the back of the ball to get it coming out with just a little more forceful spin. And then the last one is an observation that was made with a guy who spins the ball a ton around the green, Luke Donald, where he just creates a little more supination and pronation around the green than other players do. So test it out. Find which one works for you. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment.